Uh, okay, so I've been asked to do this in uh, English, even though I plan to speak in Hebrew. So please uh, bear with me on this. Uh, so my name is uh, Yuval Turjuman. I work for uh, Red Hat. I'm a part of the Overt slash Red Hat virtualization team. And uh, we're going to talk today a little bit about file systems and how we can implement them in user space with Python, of, of course. So uh, basically, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, uh, going to give a, a short overview of file systems, uh, how file systems work, the differences between file systems, traditional file systems that are implemented in the kernel, and uh, file systems that are implemented in user space using Fuse. Um, it's possible to implement a file system in user, sp in user space, and it's actually quite easy um, to do it, especially when we do it in uh, Python. So uh, I'm going to then walk through a small example, uh, Hello World FS. And if we have time, I will demo a small project that I wrote a few months ago for the purposes of this lecture, uh, which is an Overt file system. So I'm going to talk about Overt uh, at the end. It's, uh, I'll keep it, uh, I have a small uh, demo ready. So file systems, um, what is it? What why would we even want to implement one? So when we think about file systems, we usually think about you know directories and 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 co and files that we move ar uh, around. Uh, so basically, something that is uh, an interface to physical to some sort of physical media, whether whether it's local or remote, uh, we always have a physical media uh, behind it. But um, that's not always the case. Uh, we, we talk about Linux, by the way, okay? So it's not, uh, I don't know how it works in Windows. So. Uh, it's not always the case because we have, in Linux, we have uh, some special file systems, um, which are called uh, virtual file systems, right? So uh, some examples for virtual file systems. ProcFS, SysFS, right. So actually file systems is not just, you know, physical media keeping uh, files and directories, but it's also a way to uh, represent and to control a state of a system or uh, represent your data and control your data. How would we uh, implement one? It's basically just an interface, right? An interface for, uh, for common stuff that we all know, open, read, write, stuff like that. So in order to implement file system, we just need to implement some common interface and we were all set. Um, why would we want to do that? Well, um, use standard toolings. Okay, so if we have a file system and we have, uh, we can use, uh, you know, ls to view uh, files or directories, cat shell redirection to read uh, to to read and write uh, um, data to, to to our system. And it's uh, really nice. So basically, like, uh, if, if we compare it to an API, uh, if we have an API, is an API is something that developer would use, right? You would o open a connection to some, I don't know, RESTful API or something like that, and post, post uh, data or get data. But that's good for developers. For common, common users, they would not, they would rather use, you know, the standard stuff that we are all familiar from the Linux shell. So how does it work? I'm going to go really shortly about uh, file systems in general because I don't know uh, in-depth uh, uh, kernel stuff. But basically, um, in the kernel, there's a, a, a layer, an abstract layer that is called the virtual file system. Okay. So if you want to implement your own file system, you need to uh, write. You used to need to write a, a kernel module uh, that implements this interface and the file system, the, the kernel module would then register the file system inside the VFS. So a traditional uh, in-kernel file system would look something like this, right? We, uh, our application, um, user space application would call write, it would go to the VFS, and the VFS would uh, send it over to the, um, to the exact file system uh, implementation of the write method. And then usually to phys physical media. So luckily, we don't have to do that anymore. Um, there is Fuse. So Fuse is a short for uh, file systems in user space. And uh, it's basically a kernel module that registers Fuse in the VFS. And uh, it ships with all standard Linux distributions, I think. So it shouldn't be something external to 
don't need to install anything uh, external. Um, it provides, uh, uh, like we said, a kernel, a kernel uh, module that registers the fuse, okay, and a user space library and uh, a daemon that runs um, in the background. So why would we want to use it? Well, of course, it's, it's easy. We don't need to know anything about the kernel. It's all, it all happens like magic. It's super simple and it's highly adopted. It's one of the, there are hundreds of, of, of user space file systems already. Uh, so how does it work? So this is a small diagram. Uh, once we write our, uh, our uh, fuse code, once we run this, a daemon is, is forked to the background and when and, and the client tries to uh, uh, when the cl client tries to access this file system, the path would go. Uh, it would send a request to the VFS. Let's say we want to write something to the file system. We send a request to the VFS. The VFS would see that it's a fuse file system. The daemon actually listen on a special device called the fuse, and fuse would send a request to the daemon, and the daemon would reply back through fuse, and the data will go back to my, to our application, a client application. So it's actually now it becomes kind of like a client server um, architecture, right? We have this, the, the fuse server, the daemon that runs in the background, and our clients, common clients that we all know and love, and the, uh, the communication channel is actually, it's not the TCP IP or anything, but it's a, a special device called the fuse. So how do we do it in Python? It's actually quite easy. So all we, all we need to do is to import fuse, just uh, some setting of the API version, and we just inherit uh, the, the fuse class from the fuse module, and that's it, we run it. And we have a fuse file system, so that's it, my lecture is done here. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna show you, it's, uh, how many lines is it? Like six, seven, something like that, yeah, okay. So. If I could find my terminals now that they moved everything. Let's see. So this is, this is, this is the code that we uh, looked uh, before. Well, looked at it at the, uh, at the presentation. I can't really see it, but let's try to run it, okay? And we need to give it um, a mount point as we do for all uh, mount calls. So let's just call it um, temp fuse. Okay. And that's it. Actually now, if we would look at the mount table, okay, I can't see it here, but yeah. The last one is, 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 uh, is actually our daemon that runs and it listens to, uh, to uh, requests on, uh, on temp fuse, okay? So what happens if we try to stat this file, this directory, this mount point? Well, function is not implemented, right? Because our server is actually empty. We don't have anything in it. So let's try to see what's missing. Use asterisk for this. Imple implement. Okay, so we see that ls tries to stat temp fuse, but it gets a function not implemented, right? Because we didn't implement our stat, our stat method. That's basically what all, all we need to do now. Just to take our file system and implement whatever it is that we want to uh, have, you know, to, to whatever it is that we want to serve in our file system. So the first, the basic, the basic um, um, method that we would like to implement is the stat method, something that returns a stat object. So if we look at, okay, so this is the basic uh, daemon that runs, right? It's an empty one. So the get getAtter, this is the method, the first uh, method, it's the basic one. What it gets is, uh, is a path. And the request is a, is a path, and, and and it returns a stat object. So the stat object, everybody probably is familiar with stat, right? So um, we return here and say, okay, this if, if we receive a slash, then we return a directory with these permissions, and the number of uh, uh, links that point to this uh, path is one. I'm not going to go over what this what n links is, but 
this is the way it should be, okay? Okay, so let's add this to our code. Good. So we have the same code as before, just to add a simple, a very simple uh, method called getAtter, which returns a start object. And let's run it, okay? For, oh, first we have, uh, it's still mounted, right? MTFS, so let's unmount it. Good. Great, it's not there. So now, I'm going to add a small uh, argument here. Dash F tells the fuse to run it in foreground, so it won't fork to the background. I want to see the standard output from, from my application because I had the print over there. So now it runs and it serves on the fuse. We go to the fuse and we start the fuse, uh, temp, temp fuse, sorry. Okay, and we receive the path on slash. The permission are 755, right? So that is what we, this is what we implemented before. And if we go back here, let's say we change it to 750 for some reason. And run it again. The access changed to 750. Okay. Very simple. Um, not much work. Of course, we can't control C it because uh, we need to unmount so the daemon would stop. But I don't want to stop it just yet because um, if, we t if we take a look at temp fuse, so stat works now. But temp fuse, if we do ls, well, something is not right, right? Function is not implemented. So what is not implemented here? Um, we have a stat, but we need some other functions to implement. So let's use S trace again, S trace to the rescue, and imp, yeah, that's enough. Get dense, cool. So now we need to implement this one. What is this one? Let's do a check. Ah, nice. Uh, get a list of the directory entries. Okay, so this is the next method that you would like to implement if we want to see something in our file system. So let's unmount it. Good, okay. So, so we talked about getAtter, right? And um, adding some more content to getAtter. Um, let's say we have we want to serve a file that is called slash hello. Let's say we want to have a file to serve a file that is called hello PyCon, and it's under the root directory. The, uh, our uh, root directory. The content would be uh, Py PyCon rocks, and okay, we, well, we don't have to worry about the content right now. So first, we need get utter to um, you know to say that there is a file that the file of the, with this path exists. So. We have uh, like the, what we had before with the slash, and then the path is a regular file with these permissions, and the length of this uh, of this file is the content of uh, of this uh, the data string. And for every for every other uh, for every other other uh, path, we just return an uh, you know entry does not exist, no entry exists. Um, and we talked about um, implementing the the entries. Uh, get the uh, entries, and um, for this we need to implement uh, the read dir method. Okay, um, what this does is really simple. Again, uh, if the path is slash, we just uh, have a tuple of uh, of a directory entries that we would like to return or to yield, and uh, it's the dot 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 and our hello pycon file. Okay, so that's basically. So I didn't write, um, I just wrote everything inside in one file. I'm not going to, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, we will go over the read in a second, but let's just go over the get utter. We, we covered the get utter, and now we want to cover the uh, directory entries, right? So uh, let's run our, our uh, fuse server in here. Good, no, not good. Let's use dash f. 
Okay. Now if we look at views, here's our file. Okay. So first, ls, what ls does is get attributes on slash, which is a root directory. Okay, and, and ls sees that it is actually a directory. So if it's a directory, we need to call get dense. And get dense is implemented in our uh, read, in our uh, uh, fuse, in our fuse daemon as read dir. So read dir returns, returns the, uh, list of, uh, the list of files. So like we said, oh, sorry, ls dash l, we have dot, 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 and hello, PyCon 19, okay? Of course, we can set the dates and everything. We, we, can, we can do basically what we, whatever we want to do. It's virtual, right? It's not, it's not real files. It's, everything is in memory. So, um, okay, good. So now reading, let's read a file. So we need to implement read, right? Because this is what ls or cat would do. ls would, well, cat would do it actually. So uh, uh, to read a file, we need uh, to implement the read method. Of course, um, let's just check. Let's just uh, work on, on hello PyCon file. Otherwise, we will return. Well, we don't know, uh, you know, any other file in our uh, hello fs. Um, and you just uh, have a, a check here that we're not trying to read. The offset is not trying to read above uh, above the, the uh, uh, more data than the, than the data that we have inside our file. Um, but basically, it's just you know returning the content of the of of the, of the string that we want. So we probably didn't uh, unmount it yet, right? Good. So now that we have our temp fuse, oops. Let's see the content of hello PyCon, and it's PyCon rocks, of course, right? That's the data that we have for this file. And here you can see all the uh, all the callbacks that are uh, all the methods that are called whenever we try to do anything with the file. So it it very much depends on how the client is implemented, also. But uh, yeah, okay, good. It's work. It's working. Nice. So other operations that we can have, uh, of course, we have open. We can check for permissions. Okay, we can check if the file, uh, if we can open the file, if uh, if the user can open the file, and return uh, e access. Um, sorry. Um, write write writing to a file. We get the buffer from the for write. We get the buffer, and we can do whatever we want to do with this buffer. Uh, truncate. Flash everything, everything that there is to impl everything that there is to implement with the uh, VFS. This is uh, we we can do everything in here, um, you know, handle sim links and stuff like that. So how do we mount this? Okay, so it turns out that mount is actually modular. Okay, whenever we try to mount a file system. Mount would call, um, if you do mount dash t, that's the file system type, mount would call mount dot file system and just execute the file. So it's really easy. So if we have like, if I put uh, mount dot gizmo fs, it doesn't really mount anything. But if I do mount dash o, uh, sorry, dash t gizmo fs and gizmo fs as the target, on slash temp fuse, for example, of course it won't mount anything, but I would get the uh, command line. The uh, I would I, this the mount dot gizmo fs would be called, and it's just echoing the arguments that we, that I just sent. So let's say we want to uh, to write a real file system, we would have to have our mount uh, our uh, mount script, and uh, um, whenever we call mount, our uh, our uh, daemon would uh, go. You know, you know, would be executed, would be deployed, and we have everything is working as if it were a real file system. So mount options, it's really it's really easy to do it with Python Fuse also. Uh, you just it's kind of like a arg parse for every, for anyone who is uh, familiar with it. Just add a few arguments, and I'm really going to go really quick about uh, over it over it and Fuse. Okay, so over it is the open virtualization software. 
It manages the life cycle of VMs. I'm not going to go in depth about this. Um, it has a nice, uh, it has a nice uh, Python API. It can uh, it, provi it provides access to the Overit manager. We can see all our hosts and VMs that are host that are that are executed on those hosts, and um, we can do basically everything with the with the Python API. So um, I wrote a small uh, small uh, file system for this uh, for for this lecture. Like I said in the beginning, uh, it uses Fuse and it provides a file system access to show everything that we can display with the, everything that we can do with the Python API. We can do with uh, file with the file system. It's not really everything because I didn't really finish it, but, uh, <laughs> but it's it's good also. Okay, so this is over it. Over it has hosts and VMs and storage domains and whatnot. Everything is here. So to uh, I'm not going to go through this thing. Let's just take a small example for the hosts. Good. We have two hosts here, and it's let's take it. Here, okay. So I have a, a mount file which actually just runs the Python code. That's the mount.overtfs. This is how I give it. Um, I give it the um, mount options. So I give the fqdn username and password. Of course, there are other better secure ways to do it. But uh, let's just use this one. Okay. So we execute it. It's all Python, of course. We just uh, register a few paths, and uh, and we can see all our objects, our overt objects served our served here right so if we let's minimize this one good so if we look at hosts great we have two hosts one is called node.uv.net and the other is called 192 whatever and now we uh, want to uh, to set uh, echo 0 2 1 Okay, status. So what happens here is I'm telling over to uh, bring this host to, uh, you know, set the status to zero, actually put it in maintenance. So if I refresh it here, I, I hope it works. Yes, it works. You see a small icon is changed here. Okay, so it's in maintenance. Good. And okay, so I can do some other nice stuff like uh, um, move one to lala. This is oh, this is a rename, right? Move this move is mapped to the rename uh, system call and then change its name, and that's basically it. <laughs>